I often recommend that new real estate agents go and find a great team to go and work with for their first couple of years in the business. The reality, however, is although there are a lot of team leaders out there, most of them are actually pretty bad. Most of them have no business running a team, running a business. And so in this video, I'm going to break down eight signs of a weak leader. And if you're a team leader, maybe you watch this video and say, okay, maybe I've got to make some changes. So let's jump into it. The first sign of a weak leader is a leader who tells you what to do, tells you what you should be doing, but rarely shows you how to do it. We unfortunately see this all the time in real estate. A broker or a team leader will say, you know, you should be prospecting. You know, you should be doing social media. You know, you should be doing events. You should be doing open houses. You should be door knocking. They're really good at telling agents all the things they should be doing. But then when the agent says, well, okay, great. Can you show me how? Those team leaders end up finding themselves in the witness protection program. They run and they hide because They've never actually walked the walk. Number two, they don't take responsibility. Another sign of a weak leader or a bad leader is they blame everybody else and they rarely take responsibility. You know, one of the things we often talk about on our team when we're developing new leaders is that your team, like it or not, is a direct reflection of you. And for most leaders, rather than pointing the fingers, all they need to consider is looking in the mirror to get the answers they're looking for. Number three, work for me versus work for you. So there's this idea of servant leadership versus management. And so we're coming out of an error where the idea that most entrepreneurs, most business owners had this management hat on, where they say, well, this person's coming to work for me. That person works for me. Well, right now, as we come out of that era and we continue to move forward, servant leadership, I don't look at it from a tactical standpoint. I look at it as a way of leading others that seems to work a lot better. Leading from the front versus leading from the back. Servant leadership means that you work for the people on your team. In other words, your job is to help bring out the best in them. The weak leader says, you're coming to work for me, suggesting that I have nothing to do with your development. You need to bring everything to the table. I'm going to sit back with my feet up. It's up to you to prove to me versus the strong leader who says, listen, we both have a responsibility here. You have a responsibility to show up and I have a responsibility to push you, to train you, to coach you, to confront you, to hold you accountable, to get the best out of you. Because here's what we know about leaders. The best leaders are those that can get more out of people than they can on their own. All right, real quick, and then we'll get right back to the content. If you're a real estate agent, you're looking to build a listing-based business, a business where you can generate a multiple six-figure income, a business that doesn't require you to waste thousands of dollars on the new marketing gimmicks, then I'm going to invite you to click the link right underneath this video to learn about our Listing Agent Academy coaching program. This is a six-month intense coaching system that more than 3,000 agents from every market all over the country have now gone through. And here's the reality. Here's the truth. I will shoot you straight. This program is not for everyone. This is for agents who value being around winners. They value being in a community of other real estate agents that actually show up, that actually put forth the work. And this is for agents that embrace high levels of accountability and visibility. To get the details, all you have to do is click the link beneath this video. You can schedule a coaching consultation and then you can decide for yourself. So with that being said, let's jump back into the content. Number four, weak leaders don't coach. And so this goes right into what we were talking about in point number three. 
a bad leader, a weak leader, does not sit down with you, does not come up with a plan to help you accomplish your goals. They don't hold you accountable to doing the things that will lead you to accomplishing those goals. They sit back, you rarely ever hear from them. They're not confronting you because they want to avoid confrontation as much as possible. They don't hold you accountable. They're not teaching you they're not developing your skills. And oftentimes, those weak leaders have high turnovers because the people on those teams say, well, what am I even doing here? This person isn't helping me to grow. They're not helping me to get better. And that is a huge thing to look out for. Number five, they treat servers poorly. Now, this one is a little unorthodox, and you may have never considered this, but one of the biggest signs of a weak leader that has a scarcity mindset, that has a management mindset, and all of the things we've talked about so far in this video, when you go out to lunch, when you go out to dinner, when you go out to breakfast with a weak leader, you will see that they treat the server very poorly in that they don't even make eye contact. They show them absolutely no mutual respect. You'll see quickly, they won't say it, but you'll see in their actions the way in which they think about people that they may deem they're underneath me. And so they're here to serve me. And for me, that's one of the biggest signs of a poor leader that doesn't show mutual respect to people. And they have this mentality that they're entitled to something. And on top of that, they're awful tippers. Number six, lack of presence. So this is an obvious one, but a big sign of a weak leader is them not being around. And they're not being around because they'll never admit this, of course, because bad leaders or weak leaders are very insecure, but they have no value to offer. And so therefore they become these absentee leaders. They say, well, all those people are working for me. I mean, I own the business. I own the team. I shouldn't have to go in there. I shouldn't have to do any of the work. I got all these worker bees. They owe me. And so there's no reason for me to go in there. And quite frankly, there's no real value for me to offer anyways. So a big sign of a bad leader is that they're never around. They're never in the trenches with their people. They're always hiding that you can never find them. You can never get a hold of them. You can never talk to them. They're never accessible. Be careful to look out for a bad leader who's never around. Number seven, ego. This is a massive one. Weak leaders have big egos because of their insecurity. So it, it's all about them. Their name has to be on everything. This is my business. You work for me. Let's get this thing straight. You're here because I pay you to be here. And again, weak leaders with low self-esteem, low self-confidence come across like dictators. They come across as these ego maniacs. That's all of their insecurities manifesting in having this massive manufactured ego. And there's nothing worse than working for an immature, bad leader who has low self-confidence, low self-esteem, low emotional intelligence with a massive ego. Number eight, no follow through. Big talkers, little doers. So a major red flag that you might be a bad leader yourself or you're working for a bad leader, is they rarely do what they say they're going to do. And we see this all the time with new team leaders or new entrepreneurs. They're really good at politicking, you know, maybe meeting with somebody once in a while and saying, yep, we're going to do this to make things better. We're going to do this. We're going to do this. We're going to do this. And they never follow through. 